tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are on a paradise island, living in happiness and freedom, while the woman who loathes you for what you are is planning to take away your freedom and forever put an end to your happy life. Listen now as Escape brings you Somerset Mom's unusual story, The Vessel of Wrath. As I sit here with the sea-cooled breezes coming into the open window and the sounds of the breakers washing the sands before my house, I think of the far places and the people I have known there. In particular, I think of the thing that happened in the chain of islands known as the Alas Group, which is a fair distance from Java. It extends about 75 miles east and west and 40 miles north and south. At a certain moment of the world's history, the controller of the principal island, which is called Baru, was Mynheer Everett Gruter. And he ruled the people who inhabited the Alice Islands with firmness, tempered by a keen sense of the ridiculous. He was very short and extremely fat, and he had twinkling blue eyes. He knew that he had no dignity in his form, but for the sake of his position, he made up for it by dressing very dapperly. One morning in the early heat of summer, his head boy came into his bedroom while he was dressing. What is it? To Aunt John's, mine here. He wishes to see you. Oh, what an unholy hour for a holy man to call. Yes, mine you. Very well. Ask the Tuan to wait and say I shall come directly. Mm-hmm. Tuan Jones was the Reverend Owen Jones in charge of the Baptist mission on the Alice Islands. His headquarters were also on the island of Baru. He was a tall, thin, melancholy man with a long face, sallow and drawn, of about forty. He lived with his sister in a little white house about a half mile from the village. She was about the same age as her brother and bore a remarkable resemblance. Mr. Gruter both disliked and respected the Reverend Mr. Jones, disliked him because he was narrow-minded and dogmatic, respected him because he was honest and good and the only qualified doctor in the group. At any event, Mr. Gouter buttoned up his tunic, went into the sitting room. Reverend Owen Jones got up. Uh, good morning, Mr. Jones. Have you come in to have a peg with me before I start my day's work? I've come to see you upon a very distressing matter, Mr. Gouter. Oh, uh, sit down, my dear fellow, and have a cigar. Uh, thank you, no. I neither smoke nor drink, Mr. Gouter. Yes, of course. How could I forget? Uh, please, sit down, Mr. Jones. What can I do for you? I've come to see you about the man they call Ginger Ted. I want to know what you're going to do about him. Why, what has happened? It's disgraceful. There was a disgraceful row in one of the Chinese shops last night. Ginger Ted wrecked the place and half killed the owner. Drunk again, I suppose. Naturally. When is he anything else? It took six men to get him to jail. Well, he is a hefty fellow. He must be deported from these islands, Mr. Gooter. Absolutely must. Oh? The man's presence is a public scandal. He's never sober from morning to night. And as for his behavior with the native women... <laughs> yes. Well, Mr. Gruter, you know this man's transgressions just as well as I do. It's grown steadily worse ever since he came here. Now he has really overstepped the limit. I beg you to use your power and turn him out once and for all. Uh, it is time for me to go to my office, Mr. Jones. I shall see what must be done. I wish you good morning. A few minutes later, Mr. Gruter was in his office, where he immediately called for Ginger Ted to be brought before him. The man was led in with the water on either side. They left him standing there. He swayed a little, 
Vincent obviously was suffering from a furious hangover. Oh. He had a black eye, and his mouth was cut and swollen. And Mr. Guter was quite upset, for this unappetizing object had shared many a bottle of beer with him, oh. and he liked the reckless way in which Ginger Ted squandered the priceless treasure of life. Oh. He looked at the card sheet before him. I see that you smashed up Lumwang's shop to smithereens, then proceeded to break his head with a bottle, oh. resisted arrest, and knocked flat the sergeant. What have you to say for yourself? I was blind. I don't remember a thing about it. Oh, oh my head. They say I half killed him. I suppose I did. I'll... I'll pay the damage if they give me time. You will, Ginger, but it's me who will give you time. You are a disgrace. Incorrigible. You have kicked up row after row. Uh, I can see it is hopeless. You know I meant no harm. That is what you always say. Look here, why can't you behave yourself? We are friends, aren't we? Of course we are. Well, you have made a devil of a mess this time, and the Reverend Jones is all for having you kicked out. Oh. I have got to do something about it, or he will write to the governor in Batavia. No, and he is quite right. You have got to be punished. I am sentencing you to six months on Mapatiti. Oh. Hard labor. Oh. All right. Now... How about a bottle of beer with me before you go? You look as though you need it. It's the truth, I do. You're a pal, Mr. Gruter. Ginger Ted took his sentence with good grace. One, he knew he had overstepped the bounds, and two, there were several rather... Delightful native girls on the island of Maputiti that he had not seen for several months. He bore the controller no malice for his punishment, and he was sent to pay his debt. The six months had passed but for a few days when chance stepped in. The head man of Maputiti was stricken with a sudden illness. Messengers were sent to Baru, fifty miles across the sea, and help was begged of the missionary, the Reverend Mr. Jones. But Mr. Jones was at that moment enduring an attack of malaria. He was in bed and talk the matter over with his sister. It sounds as though the headman had acute appendicitis. You can't go, Owen. You can't. Well, I, I can't let the man die. But you couldn't operate in the state you're in. No, no, I, I, I suppose not, but I... I'll do it. You can't remove an appendix. Why not? I've seen you do it. You've done lots of minor operations. I can't allow it. it. It's too dangerous. They wouldn't understand. A woman, no, no. You... I'm going and that's all there is to it. And so Miss Jones went by launch to Mapotiti. She performed the operation on the headman under the greatest difficulties, and it is to her everlasting credit that she saved his life. And when she saw that he was well on the mend, she packed up the medicine chest and was taken down to the wharf where she embarked on the launch to take her back to Baru. On the out journey, she had been the only passenger, but now there was another, Ginger Ted. He had paid his debt to society and was returning for another chance. The crew consisted of the head boatman and a mechanic, both native. They were about 30 miles out in the open sea when Ginger Ted took the stopper out of a bottle of arrack and took a long pull. Oi, chum. How's about a swig? Thank you, Ginger. Boatman, I do not wish you to drink anything while we're on the journey. Do you understand? Yes. Oh, yes. <sighs> A little air can do no one any harm. <laughs> Thank you. If you drink again, I shall complain to the controller. <laughs> Miss Jones knew they were being extremely rude at her expense, and she closed her thin lips even more tightly. Her long, bony face became grim. They went due east, and the sun set radiantly behind one of the small islands. The sea was like glass, and Miss Jones suddenly felt her heart filled with gratitude for the beauty of the world. It was then that there was a lurch, and the launch began to vibrate, and the engine rattled. Oi! What's up? Propeller, Ginger. We scrape free. Do we make it back to Baru tonight? Better we not. Better we stop at Ireland and fix. Right. Oi, miss. We're going to have to put over at the little island over there. Put out a new propeller in the morning when the tide's out. That's impossible. I can't spend the night on an uninhabited island with three men. A lot of women would jump at it. How dare you speak to me like that? 
I think you're very insolent. If you don't go on to Baru, I'll have you all put in prison. Now, look here. We're not going to Baru. We can't. The engine breaks down all the way. Who knows where we'll drift to? Now, if you don't like it, you can get out and swim. Oh, you'll... You'll pay for this. Oh, shut up, you old cow. <laughs> From then on, Ginger Ted was occupied with the rather tricky job of beaching the launch. What? Miss Jones sat quivering with indignation, and then, as the full meaning of what lay before her dawned, her anger turned to fear. I see it all now. I see it all. There's nothing at all the matter with the propeller. He wants to get me ashore, where he has me at his will to do his worst. Oh, I know his character. Despicable, horrid. And there can be no help from the natives. He's bribed them to help. But I must have courage. I shall sell my virtue dearly. Dearly. And if he kills me, then I should rather die than... And in her fear, she removed a scalpel from the surgical instrument she had so lately used to save her life and hid it in her clothing. Then they were ashore. Then the night came. Ginger Ted did his best. Oi, miss. Come on over to the fire. We've got some lovely grub here. Nip of Arak won't hurt you neither. I want nothing. I want to be left alone. Oh, you can go to the devil then. Go hungry. Don't mean nothing to me. How'd you like this? It's quite a bit nice to have She walked away with head erect, the scalpel held tightly in her fist. And though she was looking for a place to hide, a place of safety... Her instinct told her it was better to keep that bad man in sight. And then if he came toward her, she would be prepared. The moonlight would show him to her. Presently she found a little hollow and sank down into it, where in the distance she saw the warm glow of the fire and the huddled, dreadful shapes of men around it. He's plotting it now. He's making them drink. They're asleep soundly. I'm afraid... I'm so afraid. Oh. But if that horrible, loathsome man makes a step, comes near, I'll kill him. I'll kill him. We will return to escape in just a moment. And now... Back to Escape. It should be mentioned again that Miss Jones was a woman hard on 40. She had an odd, drooping gracefulness and was extremely flat and thin. Her features were much like her brother's, the Reverend Owen Jones. She suffered a good deal from indigestion. But at that moment, her suffering bore a pain which was far more exquisite. What shall I do? What have I done to deserve this? Then she prayed, then trembled, as terrible phantoms crossed her mind. And the time passed. She saw the fire at the beach die down. And now was the time that Ginger Ted might be expected to turn on the woman who was at his mercy. She smothered a cry, for suddenly he got up and walked in her direction. She clenched the scalpel more tightly. (sighs) She couldn't understand it. Why? 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 And then when she saw him go back to the fire and knew that for the moment at least he was spared, her nerve gave way. (laughs) After that, she felt a little better and decided to close her eyes for a moment. The strain of watching had tired them, and when she opened them again, it was morning. And with a sudden shock of fear, she found that she was covered with two copra sacks. He must have done it. Good morning. I was just going to wake you up. There's bananas for breakfast. Come on, here's a hand. Up. Oh, thank you. Mr. Uh, what? Nothing.
Ah, I have missed you, Ginger. Here's luck. Same to you, Mr. Grutter. Well, you don't bear me any malice for the sentence I gave you, I hope? No, no, no bloody fear. I didn't have a bad time, you know. Nice lot of girls on my putiti. You ought to give me a look over one of these days. <laughs> you are a bad lot, Ginger. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've been saving a remittance from England while you are away. I took out for the damage you did, and still there is a little over 30 pounds left. That's a lot of money out here. You really ought to do something useful with it. I'm going to. Spend it. Uh. Mine here. Juan Jones wishes to speak with you. Very important, he says. Mr. Grutter, I, I shan't detain you long. I heard that... Oh, there you are, Ginger. I've been trying to find this good man all day, Mr. Grutter. Oh. And I heard he was here. Uh, how is Miss Jones? None the worse for her night in the open, I trust? Uh, no, no, not at all. I want to thank you. Oh, me? You did a great and noble thing. Me? My sister is right. One should always look for the good in their fellow man. I have misjudged you in the past. I beg your pardon. What in the blazes are you talking about? You had my sister at your mercy and you spared her. She was defenseless in your power and you had pity on her. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Neither my sister nor I will ever forget. I, I thank you. What in bloody blue blazes does he mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I brought her. Hey, what's so funny? <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you don't stop laughing, I'll break your bloody head open. Well, he, he's... <laughs> Ginger, he, he's thanking you for having respected the virtue of Miss Jones. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Me? Me? That old cow? <laughs> What does he take me for? Well, you have a reputation of being rather hot stuff with a girl, Ginger. Oh, I wouldn't touch her with the fag end of a ten-foot barge pole. It never entered my head. The ruddy nerve. I'll rig his blasted neck. Look here. Give me my money. I'm going to get drunk. I, I don't blame you. That old cow. That old cow. Here, here you are. Go and get drunk, Ginger Ted. But I warn you, if you get into mischief, it'll be 12 months next. I month. shan't get in mischief. Don't worry. But it's an insult. That's what it is. A bloody insult. Dirty swine. What does it take me for? <laughs> Ginger Ted got drunk, then he stayed drunk for a week. His pride had been hurt. And to make matters worse, the Reverend Mr. Jones and his sister decided it was their duty to save him and do something for him. They appealed to Mr. Gouda, who said, Well, if I were you, Mr. Jones, I wouldn't try to save him until he's got through his money. Then, if he is not in jail, you can do what you like. But Ginger Ted didn't want to be saved. He spent his money and then sulked, waiting for the next remittance from London. Miss Jones was unrelenting. She invited him to dinner and spoke to Mr. Grutter about it. Oh, Mr. Grutter, my brother is very anxious that we should have the man they call Ginger Ted to supper with us. And I've written him a little note inviting him for the day after tomorrow. I think he's rather shy. I wonder if you'd come with him. Well, that is very kind of you. My brother feels that we ought to do something for him. Mm, have woman's influence and all that sort of thing. Will you persuade him to come? Well, I do my best, Miss Jones. Uh, tell me, Mr. Grutter, how old is he? According to his passport, 37. And what is his real name? Surely not Ginger Ted. Edward Wilson. Edward Wilson? Mm, yes. Edward Wilson. The controller actually persuaded Ginger Ted to join him. This on the promise of several drinks at his own house before they went to dine. But on the night of the party, Mr. Cooter had to go alone. Ginger Ted was dead drunk outside the Chinese wine and grocery shop and not fit for anything. I am very sorry, Miss Jones. I'm afraid it's no good, Martha. The man's hopeless. No, never, Owen. No one is hopeless. Everyone has some good in him. I shall... Pray for him every night. I shall pray that he sees the light. Perhaps Miss Jones was right in this, but the divine providence took a very funny way of effecting its ends. 
It came in the form of a cholera epidemic on Baru and several other of the neighboring islands, and the natives were in a panic. It was more than the Reverend Mr. Jones could handle, and it was going to need more doctors, and this would take time. Mr. Gruter held a conference with Mr. Jones and his sister. We are ready to put ourselves at your disposal, Mr. Gruter. I need not tell you that my sister is as competent as any man. I should be very glad of her assistance. But I am afraid it does not work for a woman. She would have to go to some of the outlying islands. We cannot possibly spare you, Mr. Jones. Then, of course, I shall go. Ah, but it might be dangerous. Some of the natives are still treacherous. You would have too much trouble with them. I'm not afraid. I dare say, but if you get your throat cut, I shall get into trouble. Besides, we are so short-handed here on Baru, I do not want to risk losing your health. Then let Mr. Wilson come with me. He knows the natives and speaks their dialects. Ginger Ted? Oh, no, he is just getting over an attack of the DTs. He has been drunk for weeks. Uh, that's out of the question. I wonder if it would be wise. After all, he... I trust him, Owen. I shall always trust him. Oh, there was a great deal I more discussion, but in the end, Ginger Ted was sent for. He looked ill. He was in rags and hadn't shaved for weeks. No one could have looked more disreputable. Look here, Ginger. It is about this cholera business. We've got to force the natives to take precautions, and uh, we want you to help us. Why the devil should I? Well, it was my suggestion, Mr. Wilson. You see, I was afraid to go alone. I thought if you came, I should be safer. Well, what do you suppose I care if they cut your ruddy throat? They don't mean a thing to me. There's no reason you should care, I suppose. It's all right. I'll go alone. A lot of bloody foolishness for a woman to go out there alone. I dare say, well, but it's my job. And I can't help myself. I'm sorry if I offended by asking you. It wasn't really fair to ask you to share such a risk, was it? All right, all right. Have it your own way. I'll come with you. When do you want to start? They started the next day with drugs and disinfectants in the government launch. For four months, the epidemic raged, and then one day it was over. Mr. Gruter had seen nothing of Ginger Ted or Miss Jones, but he had heard from Mr. Jones that they had performed a Herculean task in the outer islands. Mr. Gruter was thinking of Ginger Ted over a bottle of beer one evening when the man came in. He was wearing a clean suit of white ducks. He was shaved. He looked another man. Why, Ginger, what on earth has happened? Why, heaven, I'm glad to see you. you. You look wonderful. Here, have some beer. Man, I have missed you. Here, let me pour it. I uh, don't think I'll have any, thank you. What? I uh, don't mind having a cup of tea, though. A cup of what? I'm uh, on the wagon. Martha and I uh, want to be married. <sighs> Ginger, you, you can't marry Miss Jones. No one could marry Miss Jones. Well, I'm going to. That's what I've come to see you about. First thing, as soon as I get off the launch. We want to be married by Dutch law as well as chapel. Oh, come now. A joke is a joke, Ginger. Uh, she but wanted it. You... She, uh, she fell for me that night we spent on the island when the propeller broke. Ginger. Ginger. She'll make you into a missionary. Well, I don't know as I'd mind if we did have a little mission of our own. She says I'm a bloody marvel with the natives. Says I can do more in five minutes with him than Owen can in a year. I guess she had an eye on you. But this... Uh, listen to me, Ginger. We have had some grand times together. And a friend is a friend. I tell you what I do. I lend you the launch and it's you can no go good, away from... Mr. Grutter. I know you mean well. But I'm going to marry the blasted woman and that's that. You must do something about it, Mr. Jones. This is madness. My sister is of full age and entitled to do as she pleases. But you don't mean to tell me you approve of it. You know Ginger Ted. Ginger Ted, Mr. Jones. H have you told her the risk she is running? Does the leopard ever change his spot? My sister is a very determined woman, Mr. Gruter. From that night they spent on the island together, he never had a chance. Mr. Gruter was beaten and he knew it. Then the next day, sportingly, he went to pay his compliments to Miss Jones, who was preparing for her wedding. How nice of you to come, Mr. Gruter. 
I've been wanting to tell you how splendid Edward was through this terrible time. He's a hero. He's a saint. Even I was surprised. I hope you will be very happy, Miss Jones. Oh, I know I shall. And you'll never guess where we're going for our honeymoon. Java? No. If you'll lend us the launch, we shall go to that island where we were marooned. It has very tender recollections for both of us. It was there that I guessed how fine and good Edward was. It is there that I shall let Edward begin his new life. Eh? Mr. Gruter caught his breath. He left quickly, for he thought that unless he had a bottle of beer at once, he would have a fit. He was never so shocked in his life. Escape has brought you Somerset Mom's The Vessel of Wrath. Direction and adaptation of the story were by Anthony Ellis. In order of their appearance, you have heard Ben Wright as the narrator, Parley Bear as Mr. Gruter, Eric Snowden as Mr. Jones, Alan Reed as Ginger Ted, Jeanette Nolan as Miss Jones, and Dave Young as the head boatman. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are on a planet of desolation and utter ruin, awaiting the return of your comrades to carry you to safety. While about you, the crawling and evil remains of life are slowly hemming you in and ruthlessly tracking you down to your death. So listen next week when Escape brings you Charlie Smith's unusual story, North of Polaris. This is Roy Rowan speaking. The CBS Radio Network.